morning this is josh thomas uh, this side uh, we shall start now uh, we already have uh, 99 plus participants right now uh, so future schools is planned this session with a with a very humble thought of providing some positive direction to the print fraternity and the response was quite uh, uh, so we got uh, calls and emails asking for the recording and summary which we believe is a good sign to uh, extend uh, extend this similar sessions in the future also uh, so we uh, like most of these sessions are became very fruitful uh, with the help of panelists uh, they made the session uh, very much useful for the participants uh, we expect the same and more today as well uh, we have a very like high number of uh, like uh, participants uh, let me first introduce the moderator for uh, for for the day, uh, Mr. Sriram Selvam, who is uh, uh, who is associate editor uh, with Print Week India. Uh, Sriram keeps scanning the entire print industry and uh, someone who can uh, write volumes about it. Uh, we are thankful to Print Week for all the support they extended to us so far. Uh, special thanks to Noel and Ramu, uh, who was uh, was very supportive all through the way uh, so over to you uh, sri ram you you can you can take the session ahead sri ram you have to unmute the mic Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jos. Yeah. So, uh, thank you for the introduction. And yes, uh, we are happy from Print Week to be part of this uh, session. Let me take this opportunity to welcome all the uh, panelists for this discussion hosted by Future Schools on the topic, What Next? The Impact of Corona on the Printing Industry. Uh, the previous two sessions had a host of experts share, share their views and possible solutions for the industry to move ahead consolidate and grow post this pandemic. Uh, today, once again, we have an eminent set of panelists who will shed light on several pertinent topics that we would need to address and look at in the near future. Uh, from my end, I have a set of questions for each of our panelists in their area of expertise. We would also hopefully put forth questions from the audience at the end of the session. You can post them in the comment section anytime and we will pick it up from there. Our first guest on today's panel is Sally Nair, Deputy Managing Director of State Bank of India. I'm sure the entire nation, consumers and business, businesses alike are looking at the banking sector as much as the government for solutions. It is a pleasure to have you share your thoughts with us today, sir. My first question to you is, what do you see as the role of banks in helping the MSMEs in their fight for survival in the next six months? Thank you, Sriram, uh, for the introduction. Yes, uh, I'm a banker out and out. So perhaps uh, not much of an expert on the print industry, but perhaps I can shed some light in a generic manner. So um, I, let me take it into a larger perspective of going beyond the print, print industry into the larger perspective of the corporate uh, the world itself. Yes, the COVID uh, uh, pandemic, I mean, uh, when you look at the COVID pandemic, you realize how globalized the world is and how it can impact. You know, it has nothing to do with India. It started off at Wuhan and how it has really, really come to impact and how it has, it has virtually disrupted uh, uh, activities across the world and to a very large extent in India itself. Of course, the uh, lockdown has seen a collapse of demand across industries after industries. And uh, now the next question comes, how do we sort of, you know, um, manage uh, the industries during this collapse, during this demand, uh, you know, when the uh, demand has collapsed, how do we maintain sanity in this? So, uh, regulatory, I think uh, a lot of actions have happened, perhaps not so much from the government side. Government is yet to announce its uh, economic package aimed at the MSME sector in particular. But from the regulatory perspective, a lot of action has happened. In two branches, the first came in, in March and the second came on the 17th of uh, April. The first, the impact, immediate impact on the industry is that, uh, you know, the term loans, 
that the industry has subscribed to as for three months from the first of march whatever is falling due from the first of march till the 31st of may term loan installments term loan interest are getting postponed by three months towards the end which essentially means if it is a three-year term loan <coughs> three installments are falling due on on uh, between the first of march and the 31st of may those three installments will now get added to the tail end which means the four year uh, three year loan is going to be three year and three months that is the first impact and that is the first uh, what we call concession that has been given the second is those enjoying the um, those enjoying cash credit or an overdraft facility uh, the interest is actually you don't have there is a moratorium on, on interest and that interest gets accumulated and you pay after uh, the first of june so those uh, two things have happened directly to the industry and uh, not just industry it is across including the retail it is it, it's something that is available across the country and uh, indirectly also the uh, the uh, the regulator has come step in and you know a large flow of capital a large flow of cash into the msme sector comes from the ngfcs and ngfcs are also being supported by the regulator in the form of what we call targeted ltros long term repo operation i i don't know how much how many of you understand what a uh, repo is repo is the uh, the rate at which reserve bank of india lends money to 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 the banks and today the repo rate is at 4% 4.40% what the reserve bank has done is it is giving three 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 year money to the banks at 4.40% so that this money can be pushed in to the ndfc sector for you know providing liquidity that so that they continue with their lending activities to the msme sector in the, on the 17th of april it was accentuated further it was uh, you know it was added uh, to include the microfinance sector and the the the, the uh, me, medium ndfc sector so ndfc is being supported to give liquidity the uh, the banks are supporting the msme sector directly by providing moratorium over the next three, three months in fact there is a standstill clause so even if you are a, if you are in an irregular uh, uh, you know sort of a condition that irregular condition will stay and a standstill will it will stand still for the next three months so that in fact is a relief to the banks to support the msme sector further and uh, a couple of other things also has happened in the form of you know you know increasing the liquidity in the system which includes you know uh, uh, the the uh, the ltro i just mentioned 1 lakh crores is going to come there the crr has been reduced right which essentially means any any deposit that the bank takes uh, obviously that needs to be returned and some of them will be in the savings bank it, it has to be i mean the Uh, liquidity has to be maintained so that in, at any short notice any amount is actually can be provided by the bank to any customer so that is you know uh, ensured through something called a crr cash reserve ratio this cash reserve ratio the banks uh, the reserve bank has reduced it from 4% 4% to 3% the impact of 1% reduction is 137000 crores of additional liquidity being provided to the bank so that it can lend similarly on the msf side also the uh, from 2% it has increased to 3% is essentially msf is a facility that the uh, reserve bank offers to the banks against uh, the slr securities for short term management of liquidity so this reduction from uh, the this increase from 2% to 3% also at 1% is you know if you look at the deposit uh, total deposit the bank system is about 1 uh, 137 lakh crores 1% comes to 1.37 lakh so the crr cut of 1% and the msf increase from 2% to 3% adds 1 lakh 37 plus 1 lakh 37 about 2 lakh 74000 crores today there, there is ample liquidity in the system with the banks to provide any kind of support to 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 the msme uh, sector in particular and the corporate sector in uh, in, uh, in, uh, in in uh, in 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 a large measure so the amount today that is entering the system uh, in terms uh, 
what is entering the reverse repo system in the country is 6 lakh 90 thousand crores so that is the kind of liquidity that we have so there is ample liquidity in the system now what uh, uh, what is happening is the risk element in the system that needs to be addressed and i'm sure i'm i'm told the government is going to come up with a package shortly shortly which will be aimed at the msme sector and this will be aimed at the msme sector enjoying credit facilities up to 25 crores 20% is going to be guaranteed 20% additional flow uh, into the sector is going to be guaranteed by the government so once that also comes in see the see, it's not good enough uh, liquidity has uh, the bankers having liquidity the liquidity has to be pushed into the system bankers are risk averse they are very very scared of the risk element no so there has to be a package from the government to remove the risk from the system and this new package that will be announced shortly as as early as next week we hope will uh, uh, will will also help in pushing this liquidity into the system so that you know during this demand collapse period the msme sector and the industry survives hello sriram am i audible have i made myself clear yeah yes yeah, sir i was on mute so uh, that's why i couldn't reply to you immediately thank you yeah. i think you made some very relevant points especially about uh, the uh, future direction in terms of uh, government uh, uh, you know help and aid that is coming for the msmes i'm sure yeah. we are all eagerly waiting to hear what, what that so, is going to be i i i was uh, uh, that's i'm sure is going to come shortly so i was more focusing on the regulatory aspect of it now yes, come yes, to yes. bankers per, uh, per se bankers have been directed to give 10% of the present outstandings in your fund base limits as emergency covid the credit line subject to a maximum of 200 crores and this is going to be at the mclr so the mclr if you know it is as low as 7.40% so that is the first thing that specifically aimed at the msme is coming the second okay. uh, aspect that is coming uh, from the banking system to the msme is the redrawing of the booking gap itself you know the booking gap the receivable cover the margin etc are being tweaked to provide additional liquidity this these are things that can happen at the branch level itself you don't have to really move up up to 3 crores it can happen at the branch level itself okay. so these are the two ways in which you know the liquidity is directly coming Uh, into the system in the form of this emergency credit line and the tweaking of the working capital. I think that uh, embassy sector should take advantage of it to tide over its immediate liquidity crisis. All right, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, so mo moving on, uh, as you are all aware, packaging has been the most talked vertical in print for a few years now, and COVID has only made uh, has laid more emphasis on it. We have with us one of the most prominent names in packaging. Venu Gopal Menon, Business Director, BU Sheet Fed for the Indian sub subcontinent, Bost. We hope he can he can throw more light what lies ahead in that uh, vertical. Welcome, sir. Uh, hello, Sri Ram. Am I audible? Yes, you're you're yeah. audible, sir. So, yeah. I my first question to you is this: In the previous yeah. two sessions, several panelists stressed stress the growth potential of packaging and that printers should leverage the expected trends in consumer space. What is mm -hmm. your outlook of Indian packaging industry and the potential it holds? Yeah. So thank you very much. Uh, I would like to say hello to everyone uh, who is online and uh, thank you to Future Schools to give me this opportunity to speak and uh, give my point of view. Uh, Shri Ram, to answer your question, I am trying to be more optimist than pessimist in these times. Huh? I think it's better to be optimist than pessimist. in fact if you see before this crisis happened there was no much structural issues in our economy unlike in 2008 crisis when the lehman crisis hit the financial sector so there was structural issue on the financial sector on the mortgage and etc yeah i agree there was some kind of slowdown which was happening in india and uh, uh, we were expecting this to come up and pick up sooner than later uh, before this uh, crisis hit us so i would say that uh, yes post covid uh, as everyone is seeing you see in the news channel people are talking of uh, 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 as mr narendra patshuri said 
is before uh, after christ or before christ it will be now before covid and after covid but definitely one thing which is going to change uh, in the short to mid term is the consumer behavior which will change before any normalcy returns uh, back in the economy or across the globe so when i say consumer behavior will change it will be more towards convenience more focus on safety and hygiene and which will be a primary factor for everything and uh, and i feel this impact is definitely short term i don't see it is a, going to be a long term uh, impact uh, especially packaging i feel should rebound in mid term uh, if not sooner uh, because packaging if you uh, see everyone knows that packaging is catering to staples that is food pharma personal care so definitely what can hit in the short to mid term is a discretionary spends people may not spend on say buying a car or a telephone or air conditioner or fridge or a real estate because these are something which can be put uh, later but when it comes to discretionary uh, uh, spends which are for daily needs this is definitely going to happen yes there will be definitely some discretionary spend which can affect in packaging would be something on luxury products on cosmetics on consumer durable on the automotive sector packaging but definitely on food pharma personal care or daily staples i think it is not going to hit uh, in the mid term definitely in the short term yes but not in the mid term if you see for example e-commerce i have been in touch i have a skype meeting with my global counterparts every week and across europe and america the e-commerce has seen between 35 to 37% jump in e-commerce especially in western europe and in us in last two months unlike in india where the e-commerce somehow was uh, was uh, only catering to the essentials to the amazon or flipkart could not deliver you the books or the dress or uh, the shoes and this kind of stuff but this was not the not so the case in uh, other uh, developed economies so e-commerce could supply anything so what is going to grow in the coming times in packaging definitely is e-commerce for sure take away packs you will see that many people in the short to mid term would not like to go out and eat there will be definitely a drop on footfalls in restaurants or eating out uh, in some segment of the population so people would like to buy the groceries and cook at home so definitely when i say groceries they have to buy packaging is there to stay take away packs so now all the hotels i have been talking to few of the hotel chains and they are already putting in place some strategies in the next one year that the even the top of the top five star restaurants are thinking of a business model where they can deliver food from their restaurants to at home and they are now thinking on two things how do do they pack it how do they deliver it so take away packs ready to eat segment you see lot of growth now today ready to eat because today uh the working class population will try to buy ready to eat segment which is like ntrs or the kohinoor or the uh, other products from itc so ready to eat segment so food packaging will grow health concern will become predominantly important post covid this is as everyone is saying the insurance sector will grow because people will look at insurance so health will be a major concern so pharma sector is bound to grow drastically post covid pharma exports especially in regulated markets is bound to grow because i have, we are seeing that pharma is doing exceptionally well in europe and us today but uh, in lot of sectors in pharma government has put a ban on quite a few of medicines but post covid i think this will open up so pharma exports will grow growth in otc drugs will grow so pharma sector which will make a big uh, comeback food packaging groceries e-commerce also i see there will be more growth in flexible packaging also because when i'm talking i'm not talking in folding carton per perspective I'm, i'm talking packaging as a whole if you see flexible packaging basically is a primary packaging anything and everything you buy today first is packed in a flexible pouch whether it's printed or unprinted you will see that and then so flexible packaging here is is going to stay corrugated packaging this is another segment which will definitely grow again in e-commerce in groceries or home deliveries so in general overall i would say i remain positive on the packaging sector in the mid term and it should revive uh, faster since it is consumption driven uh, for daily needs for commercial printing yes if i talk in printing in general commercial printing will definitely take a hit in the short to mid term but the savior in the mid to long term will definitely be packaging
Thank you so much. Uh, I think that summary is very useful because we will be coming back to you on another question that I have with, about people moving from commercial to packaging, but that's for later. Let me now uh, uh, talk about uh, other aspects of this uh, discussion. We know a lot of companies are looking for strategies to help them overcome the volatility that lies ahead, of, uh, ahead for all of us. We have K.S. Murthy, Deputy Managing Director of Toyo Inks, who will share his thoughts on this subject. Thank you for joining us, sir. Yeah. Good morning. Thank you. Sir, are you able to hear me? Yeah, I am fine. Are you fine with my voice? I am audible? Yes, sir. You are. You are. You are. Thank you. So let me uh, put this question across to you. Toyo Inks, being in touch with a large part of the Indian uh, print industry, what's your learning about the behavior of the uh, Indian printers and any comparison you want to make with uh, the world market that you're associated with? Let's, let's start with this to understand the behavior and uh, then go into the strategy that the market can adopt. Thank you, everyone. I hope... Uh... Good morning to every participants over here and uh, nice to see so much of participants and being active. Also, I'd like everyone to be safe and stay at home. This is the need of the hour. Like uh, we as a company, Toy Inc. India, we fall under the essential services. We've been operating our company since under the 30% capacity right from, you know, within a few days of our, the lockdown. Uh, yes, it has been a challenging journey until now. And uh, we have been able to manage our operations to our best. Saying this, the experiences which has come from the recently, what I could sense is that, you know, like uh, in, in the print, I think the Indian printers, we cater to small, you know, like when Toy Inc, you know, Toy Inc being in the commercial segment, also in the packaging segment, and also in the flexible segment, uh, both mono cartons and uh, uh, flexible packaging. I could see that one, the attitude towards the printer in the large printing houses is definitely there is a change and we are moving towards in the right direction. But there are many printers almost around, I can say still 70 to 75% of the printers. They don't operate on a 3P process, which I call people, print and process. They don't understand this concept. Right. They just look at the face value of the product. They just look, understand what is the need of the product. And they just, they don't understand. They don't need to understand the need of the standardization. They need to understand the need of the people. They don't understand the role of the people. They are more dependent. They don't educate the down the level staff. So these are the important process that is going to happen. When I'm comparing with the other developed markets, like today, what is happening in the European markets, and in Japan market, which have been more or less, we've been in touch with them daily. They are the more towards pro progressing towards how to face the challenge, right? Not only now before the COVID also, and also before this, you know, how we have to go ahead. So there have been a lot of move towards like, you know, how to be efficient and how to also to move towards in terms of the, bringing the cost of the operations. I think Indian small scale printers need to think a lot in this direction and become more what I can see. Okay, sir. Thank you. I think, uh, again, the emphasis is on standardize, standardization and uh, uh, more importance to the process that uh, we would like to uh, bring in into the organization. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, talking about behavior, again, we have, uh, we, we would like to understand the overall behavioral changes that the print industry has seen over the years. So for that aspect, we have an industry veteran, Venkat Raman SN, Division Head, ITC Papers and Spe Specialty Papers Division. So we are eager to hear your thoughts on the topic. So my first question is this, being a supplier of the most critical raw material for printing, you must have a very good read about the industry better than most of us here. Tell us about the industry trajectory so far and what do you think is going to change because of the pandemic? So, uh, good morning, everyone, and thanks to Future Schools for uh, organizing the seminar and inviting uh, participation. Am I to everyone? Yes, sir, you are audible. Yes, loud and clear. Right. So, I think uh, Venu, for example, covered a lot of packaging, and we are present a lot in uh, the packaging side of the business. So, I'd begin there. 
So your question is a bit broad about printers in general and what are we going to change and how has it been so far? In terms of the industry trajectory, would uh, some yeah. maybe so could... the way we look at it, uh, Sriram and uh, listeners, is that there are probably going to be two or three phases to this entire uh, COVID and post-COVID uh, recovery, if I might say so. So one, I think, is that it was very sudden. Nobody could have been prepared. And therefore, there's an initial shock. And that shock is actually twofold. One is on the supply side. If you're a printer and you want to resume today, you cannot. Your labor is not there. You're gone out. Or the restriction, there's confinement. You're not yet ready and stuff like that. Second is what is happening on the demand side too. So you can't reach out to your material. Their factories are shut. So in a B2B kind of scenario, you know that you're not going to be able to supply. They're not going to take the demand. So I think there is an initial shock period which is going to last us through this quarter almost. And as we start getting back into business, okay, the printers as well as us, I think you're going to see a period of adjustment for about uh, two, three months. So people are going to come back to some kind of their former capacity. Maybe in a couple of cases, it will almost be to capacity or even better. But I think in majority of the uh, segments, if I might say so, most people are going to come back only to some previous 80, 70, 80, 90 percent of their previous capacity. So what is do, going to do slightly better in terms of trajectory? When you said packaging, I endorse it in. So I think uh, definitely pharma, over-the-counter drugs, medicines which build immunity. You already heard of Chavan Prayash and stuff like that, which has got sold out. A bit more of processed foods and uh, also food which is better packaged. All that I think are going to do well. I think there is going to be some shifts in uh, consumer behavior. People who would have preferred, uh, although the neighborhood grocer, the one who has come mostly to a rescue, more and more people have got, got used to the idea of ordering a bit online. And I think there are new organizations and businesses which are going to do that. That trend is going to get strengthened and continue a bit. I think people are going to look for safer packaging too, additional packaging. So that credibility is going to count as who can do better packaging. Just to a printer would mean that he has to better get ready as to you know how he can deliver the better packaging and why would someone come to him for that better packaging. So it can be a movement, for example, from, uh, let's say, a recycle to a bleached kind of fiber, which conveys more uh, foot contact safety and stuff like that. You must also realize that there are some supply side issues which are halting. For example, if labor is not there, you're not going to get your collection of waste paper and therefore the supply side industry is going to get disrupted for the first three, four months. So pharma, food, things associated with telecom, home entertainment, all that, leisure, for example, we're all going to do a bit more sports inside, confined with others, games and toys, all that I think, and some amount of books for all that will do better. But on the whole, the disruption is so large, I think the in impact for at least the first half of this year is going to be pretty negative. You know, if you take most of the supply side companies, I don't know, the big FMCG companies and the food companies, most of them would operate be, would be operating between 30 to 60% of the former capacities. So that would continue, you know, for uh, all the uh, FMCG companies, even some of the processed food and beverages, because there are just, you're just confined and there is no movement. And you know that our entire road transport system has been so badly hit that you cannot even reach goods across. So that's been our experience too. We have started some of our lines today, but we are running at maybe close to 30% of our former capacity and all our plants are slowly trying to come back on stream depending on the situation, depending on the controls that we are able to exercise. Between staples and discretionary revenue, I think we endorse that. So I think discretionary yeah. spending in lot of categories is going to take a bit of time to come back. You may have to wait till the second half of even uh, the next year before this comes back. And then there are many end use segments today which are entirely dependent on labor. If you take apparel and hoseries, for example, they're entirely dependent on labor. Now that labor is melted away, for those factory restart is going to come back. For example, you take a place like Tirupur or Bangalore, which is all full of hosiery companies. Uh, I don't know what is going to happen there. So I think those kind of demands are purely discretionary. They are all going to get affected for longer and people involved in some way, either in packaging or in commercial printing in such chains are going to get uh, kind of affected. I think a bit more disposables will come into play. Like when we talked about flexible, we would like to think that some of the disposable segments, you know, use and throw initially in health conscious, hygiene conscious people is going to make a bit of comebacks with respect to food and all that and beverages. And therefore that will be there for to stay. Now, given the trajectory of the print industry, you must understand that uh, 
the although Mr. Nair mentioned about what would get released through RBI measures and therefore filter through banks like SBI and other commercial banks, these MSMEs and small scale units which are in print should be able to access it. Now, if the supply chains of the large companies themselves are going to work at less than normal capacity, I think you would expect that many of the printers would be in some kind of difficulty. Demand not being that robust, at least for quite some time. Their own liquidity positions being uh, troubled. They'd have to, you know, most printers would have cash for one or two months of their wages, for example, to pay labor. So they would be running dry and all these things. And I think that is something which is uh, going to take a bit longer to recover as far as the industry is concerned. The print growth definitely would be affected. Packaging demand do well in a few other sectors, but otherwise it's going to be affected. There are going to be probably two or three phases with respect to this, an initial shock period, a certain adjustment period, and later on some changes in trends and patterns which people then start, uh, you know, where demand comes back to normal in many of the segments or growth comes back again. So that's the view as far as the, you know, paper and the print and packaging and the print industry is concerned. Thank you so much, sir. Um, do we have uh, Mr. Kamal Chopra with us? So can I? Yes, sir. I'm there. Uh, I'm there already. Okay, great. Uh, thank you for joining us, sir. I think uh, I'd like thank to introduce you, uh, Professor uh, Kamal Chopra, Chairman of PAMEX. General Secretary of Offset Printers Association and ex-president of uh, All India Federation of Master Printers. Happy to have you with us, sir. Thank you. Sir, I, uh, is, is, yeah, okay. I can see you now. So uh, we have uh, several uh, topics to discuss with you, but uh, in terms of uh, the current crisis, what do you think that printers can do to mitigate the crisis uh, as a fellow printer yourself and ensure that uh, they don't go into serious losses, especially from the commercial printer's point of view. Thank you very much. And uh, I would like to say good morning to all the attendees here. Thank you for calling me. Uh, the problem, as uh, I was just listening to the previous speakers and uh, they're talking about uh, packaging is growing. Everybody is knowing packaging is growing. But how many printers are doing the packaging in India? As we say, we have 250,000 printers in India. And uh, believe me, more than 85%, 80 to 90% are micro and small printers. So what the role of those commercial printers will do, we'll discuss a bit later. But first, I will tell you, after COVID, many things are going to be changed many, many things, their world will not be the same after COVID, I tell you. Because sitting idle at home is again now a great job these days. A few days back, while watching the news on TV, just came across the statement of uh, Mr. Ravi Shankar Prashad, Union Minister of Holding Law and Justice, Communication and Electronics and Information Technology portfolios in the government of India. He assured that app developed by his ministry for COVID-19 tracks will work without interfering the privacy of a person. Just listen, without interfering the privacy of a person. The app asks for location access, after which you have to create an account, account through a simple mobile number verification. As per the government notification, your location data is offline and is shared only when there is a potential health risk. Interestingly, Prime Minister Narendra Modi also offered to share the virus tracking software with other SAR countries like Pakistan, Afghanistan, Bhutan, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Maldives, and Bangladesh. Looks a great move. Because as we have noticed, in a just few weeks, a virus 10,000 of the millimeter in diameter has transformed all the democracies. States have shut their business and sealed the people indoor. If South Korea and Singapore are a guideline, medical and electronic privacy are bound to be the caste aside. It is the most dramatic extension of the power of the state since Second World War, one can say. One taboo after, other, after another has been broken. Not just the threat of the fines or prisons for ordinary people doing ordinary things, 
but also in the size and scope of the government's role of the economy. New normals are being designed for your living style and to run your business and factories. And these no, new normals, which has been designed by the government, already circulated by the Ministry of MSME, we have circulated a copy to all the members also, is not possible to be followed by not less than 90% printers of India. So what is their scope? Commercial printing, in other words, when this everything is going online, commercial printing is suffering. It will suffer more, everybody knows, in all over the world is suffering. Packaging is growing and packaging will grow till the population will grow. It cannot end. So in the, with the population, if the population growing, packaging will grow. But my worry is about those 85 to 90 percent printers, what they will do after COVID. If these instructions, I feel these instructions which is issued now for COVID, as I just uh, read the para that uh, state will not leave the powers it gets once. Now the state has the powers, government has the powers, they will not leave these powers and new normal will be begun. While opening a factory, there will be precaution, you will have to build at least one washroom for four people. You have to create the doors like this and leave this and that. All these precautions will have to follow while running the factories. It has been introduced just recently. So my worry is those printers, what they will do? Commercial printing at one end, it is not growing. And we have more than 90% printers in India are commercial printers. One end, commercial printing is not growing. Another end, government is posing is such a restriction which is not possible to be followed. I visited length and breadth of this country and found the many printers working in one room. In the front, they, they have a table with the office and the, in their back, the machine is running. How they will be able to maintain the distance? How there can be any other uh, things which is being prescribed by the government for being new normals? will be possible. What they will be doing, that is the point of concern and that is my worries. Regarding other things, I may tell as other speakers were telling, it is fantastic. Everybody knows that packaging will grow. But again, in packaging, we have two fields. I may talk about Ludhiana, which we say it is a packaging town. We have the sharp contrast than all other country cities. We have more than 85% printer are doing packaging only here. But again, very small shops, very small oh, small things they are doing. Not a big packaging house like in uh, metro cities. They don't have the facility to retain the employees in-house. They don't have all such facilities. So they are also going to suffer. My thinking is, so how the time is coming. How do you... I, 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 I get your point, but what do you think they can do to mitigate the crisis? How, how do you think they can, you know, come out of this? Yes, sir. Only one and the only solution is to working together. I build a networking and start working together. That is the only solution available. No other solution is there for the small packaging houses or printers. They have to join hands and, uh, as you know, uh, to counter a big fish, small fish can get together. So that is the only solution available. There is no other solution. So, That's so what is my thinking is concerned. So your solution uh, sure. going forward uh, for people to co come out of this crisis is to collaborate mm -hmm. and work together is what you feel. Sir, as far as crisis is concerned, I don't think there is any crisis. This is a different, this is a pause button. This, this, we are getting time to think now. See, when I started, when anybody of us has started the factory, we were not sure, we were not sure whether we will get the customer or not. We were not sure whether we will get the money or not. We were not sure about the business, but we started. Slowly with the experience we are building. Now again, again, things will come once again in the same fashion. As we are thinking, uh, I, I, I was just uh, taking in consideration the government regulation which are introduced. I was just watching, just now I received a message from our government, Punjab government, they have, uh, they are saying the same thing. You cannot open, the factory can only be open in factory area or outside the city. 
you go to any city you will find more pinty passing in the residential areas so what will be, what will be their scope the only solution left is they should join hand together and work in a cluster that is the only solution available for the survival there is no other solution now the question of survival not a solution it's a survival survival is possible if they join hand this is uh, my thinking so i think uh, as as we know survival of the fittest is there will have to be, become fit by joining head together and uh, for small printers or the commercial printers i don't feel there is any solution left now Uh, Sriram, sorry, I think uh, Sriram got a connectivity issue. Uh, so I will. Uh, oh, no yeah, so I'm just. Uh, connect. Yeah. Uh, so Anil Kumar, uh, who is who is a uh, HR manager of uh, HR head of uh, Kerala region of uh, Apollo Tires. Uh, so he is someone who started his career in, uh, in 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 a printing and publishing house. and uh, he is uh, handling this uh, uh, like hr for almost uh, last 28 years so uh, you know that uh, printing uh, being mostly printers are from the small and uh, like micro small and medium segments and uh, they don't they don't follow a very rigid human resource system so in this year like time of crisis obviously we need to change our uh, uh, systems and processes and approach to the people so what do you think uh, is that printers should change or small entrepreneurs should change in 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 terms of uh, human resource systems or a personal management uh, aspect okay uh, thank you mr uh, just too much uh actually i am visualizing uh, a, a hr manager in each of your organization and what he will be doing then the most difficult part of a hr manager uh, is the real challenge of uh, educating his leader to understand the complexities of the changes happening but uh, here i congratulate uh, each one of uh, this business community printing business community to take the challenge first of course that hr managers uh, the difficult role is actually been taken up because uh, they are uh, trying to keep uh, their knowledge updated in this crisis situation so what will uh, an hr manager do in this uh, crisis situation later the first and foremost thing he has to do is actually to facilitate a communication system very strong communication system where the leader like each one of you in your organization to communicate openly and transparently about what is happening in around us what is happening in the industry and of course about his assessment about the future so that should go to each and every employee in the company the organization is actually looking forward uh, to their leaders words so that will be that is the most important thing and taking my own example in apollo tires we have got 19000 employees our chairman and vice chairman reached out to these 19000 employees through their uh, whatsapp number and uh, no, uh, through the support of internet actually they were able to reach out to each and every employee so that i think it is the most important thing but the communication should be very transparent and open second thing is uh, the, i'm i'm agreeing with my previous speakers that uh, there is a new normal coming tomorrow after the covid definitely post covid is not going to be a continuation of pre covid so there is a real requirement for reimagination of the organization in whatever uh, business you are definitely it is going to be a different uh, uh, you know, game uh, after the covid so 
the re reimagination of the leader actually whatever i am telling is about the, the entrepreneur the leader business leader he has to reimagine with the support of his own uh, core team how the organization should uh, cater whatever the threats and the opportunities you are discussing definitely uh, no crisis will uh, leave us uh, without opportunities if there is a threat there is an opportunity identify the opportunity reimagine and then of course build an organization and the third thing is alignment alignment of each and every employee of your organization around the new reimagined strategy of the organization so then only you will be able to succeed small or bigger smaller is actually beautiful nowadays in the uh, the, the the future small organizations are uh, i think they will be fit and uh, they are fitness for the survival so they can change according to the tunes of uh, the 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 uh, the customer the changing uh, behavior patterns of the customer so aligning an organization first of all they can take into confidence the leaders can take into confidence their core team and deploy whatever is required to you know, realize your strategy for the future and uh, very importantly you have to keep your employees motivated motivation and inspiration is something which they are looking at your leaders so there should be mechanism where which a realistic approach it not be you know simply you know exaggerating things and giving artificial enthusiasm but you inform them through the communication channel you under make them understand that what is the opportunity ahead so in order to grab that opportunity you need to change but at the same time it is not the end you have got a future so that sort of a motivation the leaders has to give i am telling if it is a big organization there should be some mechanism systems for that if it is small organization the leaders themselves can take a, a, a leadership for this particular thing also and uh, the most important thing is visibly show the care and concern and every employee in an organization is now upset no doubt about it they are seeing the news they are uh, updated with the internet so they know what is happening outside so they are really worried so they need somebody to show the care and concern they will be definitely looking at the organization in which they are working so there are small small things which we can do it need not be great things so what we are right now apollo is doing is we are uh, uh, having a, a interactive session with our doctors we do have two doctors in our organization here in kerala so these doctors are conducting interactive sessions with the employees so that their concerns about their physical or mental uh, you know uh, disturbances uh, they are getting addressed so that is one thing you uh, know giving a solution other as well as giving a confidence to the employees so this is very much possible we can even sanitizing we are distributing to all the employees their families a sanitizing gift kit so that their fam families are also safe so that is how organizations can show in their own limitation the care and concern for the employees i think uh, these are all the things which uh, uh, hr managers do in this crisis and which uh, i should tell you that i am doing it for my own company thank you thank you sir i think uh, this would be very useful because like uh, we stated in the question uh, the organization uh, organizations most of it like mr kamal chopra also pointed out aren't very organized and they work in a very uh, 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 unorganized manner in terms of 80% of the industry so this would be helpful let let's go back circle back to uh, mr sali nayar uh, sir i have you have given us uh, a broader perspective of how the banking sector and the government would help and what we can look forward in the coming, in the coming weeks from the government as well so uh, i i have a specific question with regards to sbi your your organization how do you think the printers can gain confidence going ahead to uh, avail these facilities that you think is going to be a, 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 a available for them and also uh, you already mentioned about the support uh, they can expect to receive but can you also suggest recommend 
ways that uh, the msmes can tide this financial crisis it's a two fold yeah. question one yeah. is of course about your organization and uh, how uh, the uh, in industry can approach your organization and second is what can these msmes do to tide the financial crisis say to approach the organization uh, in the immediate aftermath of uh, this uh, crisis or the, the ongoing crisis so so say, you're not very clear uh, clear sir can you hear me yeah Hello? now better thank you uh, i hope i am audible to everyone now you are sir now you are okay so what i'm saying is yes the bank has announced a few few schemes i just mentioned earlier uh two of them specifically that aimed at uh, you know handling the covid crisis which one is the emergency credit line which is available up to 10% uh 10% of the existing fund based facility and the second is the working capital uh, reassessment of the working capital apart from that the bank has also the as part of the regulatory package that has come in the moratorium uh, which is in place for uh, three months you know the term loan side and on the interest component for the overdraft and the cash credit all the all the all the msme has to do is simply put in a simple request to the branch concerned the operating branch where they have the relationship say that first on the moratorium that yes you would not uh, because uh, the moratorium is not not made available so the request has to come it can be a very very simple request tell the branch that you would like to make avail of the moratorium you would like both on the term loan and the interest so that would be made available to you and again there is a specific um, uh, application a simple application available with the branch on the covid emergency fund get hold of that application fill it up and give it and the emergency fund re requires no further uh, further uh, you know uh, data requirement at all but on the working capital when re, uh, when the uh, you know tweaking of the working capital which i mentioned earlier in terms of reduction in the margin increase in the cover period etc there you are projections of what, what you plan to do in the coming year in, in fi21 as compared to fi20 what are the changes that's going to happen for both in terms of your capacity utilization both in terms of the cash flow both in, and also in terms of your sales and the in the, the margins etc how that will get impacted and the kind of cash requirement to tide over has to be put across very carefully uh, some data requirement would be there would be requested from the msme uh, to 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 where uh, where a reassessment of the working capital is required the margin the cover period etc where it can be tweaked if it is within the overall limit for example some some person would have a say 10 crore limit but what we call a drawing power would be about 8 or 9 crores to uh, the draw the tweaking of the margins and the cover period can be used to take the drawing power up to the up to the uh, limit without any issue so that can be handled at the branch level itself but if you require a further over and above the existing limit a reassessment of the working capital and an additional finance is required then some amount of data uh, data e Sriram, is that uh, is that clear from the from uh, from our side? Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that input. I think uh, this will also help uh, your, your customers, many of them here, to uh, assess how they can uh, take take uh, your advice forward and utilize the benefits available. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. So, I have a question for uh, Mr. Venu Gopal uh, Menon. So, like I said, uh, there are uh so many uh commercial printers now looking to get into packaging and also on that note there is this recent uh, reliance and uh, uh facebook deal is that going to impact also I, I, there, there's a multiple thoughts here one what is going to happen to people who want to move into packaging one second will a uh, tie up like this impact or give more opportunities for people to get into this uh, seg uh, vertical and will this also bring in the case of uh, the smaller stores and supply will they be more organized more uh, where packaging could come into what do you call the puri packaging style okay <clears throat> shriram there are multiple uh, questions in, in uh, what you're asking so 
first to come to this reliance facebook deal uh, honestly speaking i cannot comment uh, how this will affect uh, uh, affect the packaging because uh, because what i read uh, between the lines is this is more uh, the joint uh, collaboration between them is to get their data because whatsapp has a huge database uh, or uh, subscribers in india so is uh, reliance geo so they want to collaborate and use their uh, subscribers uh, to gain uh, further into online uh, sales or uh, or pay pay paytm methods like the way the you pay online to garner because uh, the whatsapp pay is something everyone was talking of so reliance geo and whatsapp may collaborate on that aspect so i don't see this uh, affecting directly uh, print or packaging uh, I, i i don't know but to answer your other question is that uh, how should commercial printer be looking into packaging or whether they should get into packaging and what is the scope for that if i'm correct is it correct uh, yes, yes. Uh, my yeah assessment yeah yes so my assessment always been that you know commercial printing and packaging printing has always been a two different ball games huh? as a commercial printer cannot say that as since i'm printer i can print packaging uh, because packaging demands much more consistency because every time the jobs comes out of the machine every box should look alike so a box in the shelf uh, printed in the month of january and a box printed in the month of june should look exactly the same when it comes to the structure in terms of the printing consistency and uh, many other aspects so it's a different ball game in when i come to say so the quality and performance parameters are very different in packaging when it comes to print commercial print your commercial printing you are doing for once you print it and it's finished and one poster if it has some uh, difference from another poster it is not uh, a big impact but uh, packaging yes it makes an impact so quality and performance par- parameters are very different and uh, the mantra success mantra is zero defect packaging so we are talking of zero defect in packaging so the tolerance level of the buyers when it comes to packaging by is very very narrow second very important commercial printers have to think that it is not just to jump the bandwagon into packaging because the cash flow cycle in packaging is unlike in commercial printing because you should have the courage and the capacity to manage the working capital side and also on the receivable side because it's very different in packaging you require a lot of working capital you need to buy inventory and keep it uh, for much longer and receivables uh, payment terms are uh, now we are in the cycle of 90 days or even up going up to 180 days so it is very different so they should have the capacity to manage this cash flow cycle and i would say that uh, 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 unlike commercial printing yes packaging is a growing segment um, reasons being that everyone knows when it comes to per capita consumption of paper paperboard india is nowhere even if compared to southeast asia or china and if i were not to consider the current covid crisis which is unprecedented uh, but the, with the growing disposable income and uh, and the india growth story remains is here to remain uh, india growth story will not going to decline okay definitely it will be impacted in short to mid term but in the long term definitely this growth story is here to remain and what is very important to note that in the mid to long term everyone is talking that lot of manufacturing activities could shift to india from china so everyone will not put all eggs in one basket many companies are looking at india as a second base for manufacturing so why so there are many segments for that so the the segment which can help in packaging with the manufacturing could shift into india could be for example in toy footwear electronics this is industrial goods so these are the some of the segment which if shift to india in the mid to long term definitely it will help for the packaging to grow also important a difference between commercial and and printing and packaging packaging is much more consistent and repeat business unlike commercial which many times a one time order and then you don't know when the next order will come so packaging in that way is a bit uh, attractive because it's more consistent and uh, repeat business and as they always say the three leg strategy so th- today in today's time it is even more important any industry or any businessman who is only targeted to one particular segment or one particular buyer is in much more trouble than someone who is much more diversified or has into different business verticals because if one vertical is not profitable one vertical is not growing the other leg could make up 
So definitely in that sense, yes, packaging is, uh, is something which could be looked into. But having said that, I can only tell that even today, the margins are much better in commercial printer, printing, unlike in packaging. Packaging is a much more competitive business, much more demanding. So any commercial printer, and if I were to summarize, if any commercial printer looks to diversify into packaging, he has to be very focused before he jumps the bandwagon. When I say focus means what? Specialization is the key. Jack of all trades will not work. You need to know what niche you want to target, what specialization you're looking at. You want to focus on which segment, which market you want to target before you take the leap. You need to do some homework. What is the competition around? If there's already an oversupply or overcapacity, then it will be just a price war. Then there's no fun in it. You will only destroy the value. There's no point otherwise. You can look at many different business avenues uh, if you're uh, not packaging. Also very important when you look into jumping before is how, what is your capacity? How much is your capacity you can leverage on the finance front? Because the financing a packaging industry is very different than financing a commercial print business. Do you have any commitment from your customer or any industry segment? Is someone talking to you before you think of getting into packaging? Do you have enough space for expansion? Because packaging requires space. It's not like commercial printer you can do in city, in a house, in a much small, smaller area. It requires skilled manpower. It requires infrastructure. Your quality audits are very prevalent by end users in packaging. Do you have the capacity? Can you manage that? And in today's time, I would only say that if anyone wants to jump the bad bagger from commercial printing to packaging, you have to do the right way. Else you will waste a lot of time to gain acceptance and then you will destroy the value. So I would like to summarize, yes, there is definitely a, a growth in packaging uh, in the coming times. It is, in, it is also an attractive segment to look at, but it has its own challenges. It has its own demands. So provided that you can manage it, then you think into getting into it. And uh, that's it, Shriram, for myself. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I think that that should give a good idea of pe to people on what they can expect if they're looking to make this jump. Uh, let me move on yes. to uh, Mr. Murthy. Uh, so as someone with 11 years of experience in consumables with Toyo Inks, do you agree that there is going to be a supply chain issue now, followed by several demand related challenges? If so, do you think it is time for print entrepreneurs to redefine their SOPs? What kind of changes will the printers need to adapt to these challenges, sir? Shriram, it is very, very uh, important that we become, you know, become adaptability to the situation. I think with the current situation which we're going through is more and more we have, we have to change ourselves. Like, you know, we have to, the, we never thought, as we said that around one month back, we never thought what is going to happen to us today, right? And what situation we are going to get into it. So saying that, you know, like I would like to say that one, yes, we need to more into a digitalization. We need to get into more into a more of a e communication with the customers that no need to travel in one way. There's no need to move out of the house and there's no need of, uh, to, because which the print industry is more a lot of a, a relationship industry than more into a, a digitalization. That's what I could see that one. No, we don't, don't go much into the digital marketing. So here, I think we need to get ourselves adapted more faster and quicker of without getting in touch with the customers and getting in touch with your, the needs of, the, uh, of you. And also it says that one, when saying this one, I also I'd say that one, there is a lot of things of do, to do a value addition at this moment. A printer has to understand what type of a value addition he needs to do. And Doing a value addition at this moment will definitely help him to sustain in the business. That is the only way I could see for the small scale printers, I could see that one. As Venu was mentioning, as Kamal, Professor Kamal sir was telling that one, that you know the, our print industry, particularly in the monocartons and the commercial, there is 80% of the customers for small scale. And these people has to get and get, think of something value addition and investments at this time getting into the packaging is going to be a real challenge for them. It's not possible. And cash today is going to be the king, at least for the next six months to one year. Cash flow is going to be a major, major constraint for them. So you need to come something with a unique idea of having the cash in hand 
and doing a value addition and managing your logistics. These are the going to be the difficult things which has to be doing it, followed by the norms of the government, because the government is also coming with the certain norms, and this is not going to get over in the short term. Even after the lockdown is over, you need to follow a certain rules and regulation, which our printers is definitely much, much far behind to any other, other industries is concerned. So a big challenge for us in terms of logistics, in terms of value addition, I see, and also in terms of cash flow for this industry. Okay. Uh, thank you. On the same note, I'm going to move on to uh, Mr. Venkatraman. Uh, so he did mention, uh, Mr. Murthy just mentioned a lot of uh, changes that he's expecting from the printers to tide over this challenge. Let's talk about the behavioral changes you see in the print industry that is positive over the last couple of years. And what are the trends that you think need to change for them in terms of the behavior, uh, behavior of the entrepreneur or the industry at large? So, uh, Sriram, and so I think, uh, you know, the industry was on a growth trajectory the last three, four years. Maybe there were a few ups and downs. And the industry was modernizing. Even last year, as in 19, 20, or the, uh, 2019, as a calendar year, wasn't a high growth. But from November, December, we did see, you know, demand for packaging, print, and all that uh, start increasing and amount of positivity come in. And the trajectory of investment has been that, you know, Overall, print has been growing almost double digit in India, clearly, uh, led by uh, various sectors, including commercial, book printing, and all that. Now, all that uh, will kind of uh, readjust to a new normal. So, many Indian printers, for example, have scaled up. So, you know now that uh, many of them are multi locational, they follow the supply chain across, for example, in packaging across the partners. Even in terms of commercial printing, I think there have been investments in a lot of downstream equipment. Wherever there has been a print exhibition or seminar, whether it's in Shanghai or whether it's in Düsseldorf or anywhere, you know, Indian visitors almost are 15-20% of the total visitors. So there's a great trust for actually, you know, modernizing and upgrading themselves. Now, I don't know what is going to happen in this uh, new normal. So as I told you earlier, we'll probably have to take this in two or three phases and then see uh, how, how we are. Maybe it's a good idea to meet in December and see compared to now. But we are a fairly young set of people and we need to keep doing something. We all need to keep earning. So like Venu and others said, so we will remain a bit optimistic on the recovery, but I think the recovery shape could be very, very different. So printers uh, in general have been modernizing. So modernizing means that they are not only buying secondhand presses like earlier, although many of them continue to do that. Many of them have also been aggressively investing in uh, new kind of uh, presses. And these are six colors with quarters and stuff like that. They've also been investing in a lot of downstream finishing equipment. They're also putting a lot of money in, uh, you know, their uh, software and the color management uh, systems, for example. Now, with COVID, I think there will be some who are better prepared and some who are not. The one, obviously, management process and systems, as someone else mentioned, will be extremely important. I think there are a few guides, although Kamal Chopra ji did mention about uh, Ravi Shankar Prasad's union government. I think there are a lot of uh, you know, useful guides available for SME printers too on how they can get back to normal very quickly. With all the disruption and logistics, I think business will get a bit more local even within India before it gets a bit more national, at least in the next three, four months. Because you're local, you're able to respond quickly, you're able to meet an emergency quickly. And this confinement, which we are all experiencing now, I don't think it's going to end so quickly. Yes, come May, the confinement will reduce. I think one third of us, half of us will get back to work. But we are going to get back in stages. It's not going to be that you know somebody presses a button and by June 1st, we're all back to pre-COVID uh, capacity, demand and consumption. It's not going to happen like this. This confinement is something that we are going to stay with. And that is going to influence a lot of change in the way businesses run. So for printers, what it might mean is, you know, their entire systems about uh, hygiene and safety and good manufacturing practice will undergo a change. The amount that they have to train the people and get used to newer norms might change. So they'll have to implement all these best practices within their printing units too. They'll probably have to get certified to some degree in all this or get certified so that their end users and their customers start believing them that they are now operating to a new kind of uh, normal. So I think these are the major changes that will uh, 
uh, come in as far as uh, printers are concerned uh, post covid and uh, while demand has to pick up so as and when it happens i think the investment in uh, trajectory will come up but uh, everyone may not be able to rise to the new normal i mean especially of the hygiene and health standard which are required so you will have to really wonder when you consider the whole cross section of printer between commercial work and uh, packaging and label printers for example as how many will actually make the cut so those who are more ready than others and adapt faster i think will make the cut as far as the print industry is concerned labeling for example will become a renewed opportunity of growth you will need more things to get labeled now as safe for use or you know otherwise uh, for covid use or those kind of things so that demand actually probably looks better than earlier before to be and uh, labeling as a segment along with the packaging side but in a lot of other areas i think you'll have to wait for things to return to normal and people to feel you know the confidence has to retain return to the consumer to spend the same in education travel and other services which he was doing earlier and uh, till that happens uh, i think this uh, confinement especially is going uh, lack of travel the restrictions on travel all that is going to have a big impact on business but printers by and large i think if they are able to meet the mark get themselves more satisfied improve their hygiene and health requirements would be better prepared to meet uh, most of their uh, customer requirements and uh, they have to be very quick i mean they have to be very responsive to the needs in future competition i think therefore is going to be a bit more intense thank you sir you made a lot of in, uh, important points there in terms of how they need to be to uh, uh, you know we, uh, tight this challenge so thank you uh, you made a point about uh, mr kamal chopra mentioning about uh, the government and uh, we know how closely uh, associated he is with uh, 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 in the associations and the, he leads the challenge everywhere so i have a question for mr kamal chopra here in terms of what he thinks that the associations should do and what are his top expectations from the government uh, for the the printer community at large Sir, I'm not getting. There's some audio problem. Uh, there's some audio problem. Can you uh, can you repeat your question, please? Sure, sure, sir. So I just wanted to know, uh, as as uh, someone who has been active in associations and former president of AI, uh, All India Federation of Master Printers, what do you think the association should do to help the printers overcome this challenge? And also, what are your expectations from the government? Like top three expectations from the government for the printing industry to like tide over this. uh second point first so okay. expectation from the government i feel we must not expect anything from the government then nothing will be available especially to the i'm again uh, worry about these printers the small printers the package which is being uh, finalized is no use i think it will not be already it has been announced you can go to the tv and watch whatever they are giving so i don't expect anything from the government Uh, we'll have to do it ourselves, and always we have done it ourselves, and we can do it definitely. Uh, we will overcome this problem, and they, we will not uh, ask government to do for us. I think that will be better. Regarding the first point, association level, we are a guiding. Actually, you know, we are just educating the printers about these things. Uh, I travel, uh, I, you know, I travel length and breadth of the country, telling the people. I was, we were est estimating this thing will happen in future. It happened due to. due early because of this corona otherwise i was expecting this thing because since uh, modern machinery coming new machinery coming which is very fast uh, production is fast and the printer who are operating the small machines which has not had the production they were already feeling the reverse previously with the imposition of gst more than 17% printers closed their shops they started getting the job done from others because no the thing is not that they can't do it <coughs> they can't make it competitive previously uh, one accountant were coming to them after a month and they were doing now with gst here they have to keep it so they can't afford it similarly as we are talking about the new normals the problem will be they will not be able to afford it economically so bigger printer can afford it maybe they will be able to uh, maintain that uh, competence which is not possible with the the small printers so on the part of afmp we always try to guide the printers we have been organized almost daily a webinar telling the printers about this thing 
so they should unite and uh, definitely we have uh, requested the government for help everybody is requesting nobody is listening that's a different thing uh, we are requesting the government as per uh, if we go to the western standard we can see that in us and uh, all the western countries almost all they are given package to the industry so that the industry can pay to the employees here what is this they say you pay the electricity bill even if machine is not running you pay the taxes even if you are not earning and you pay the employees even if they are not working that's what is being done and uh, <laughs> on one part government is not giving pay to the railway employees who has their uh, daily wages like they have stopped giving pay but they are asking the industry to pay us we are bound and we will pay it is our duty to pay our employees they are just like our children and everybody taking care of them taking care of them maybe if government will not support even then we will pay that is our duty uh, regarding one thing uh, which was our previous speaker was telling that uh, i also say in all my lectures that uh, now ink on paper is not a printing if you want to survive start the printing from here you have to do some wonders you have to bring electronic or other things into printing you can print perfumes you can print smell you can print liquid so you can do anything so for the printers if they want to survive in future they will have to use their mind file printing as per, as far as the, just to be sure as far as my calculation says only two type of printer will survive one the very small who will use their brain for the printing and the biggest one who can be competitive in the world market now competition not see the main point is as it was just uh, our my previous speaker was telling competition is now indian we have to face the global competition in printing also in packaging also in packaging definitely there is a very very stiff competition so in that to either we have to be competitive by making largest production or be different so that is the only solution thank you thank you so much sir uh, i think uh, we will be looking up to you to provide uh, take these steps forward and maybe find the solution working with the government sir already we have approached the government i told you but uh, we have not uh, what to say the action they have not replied the letter a letter was also addressed to them by almost 13 association jointly that was not replied on uh, second thought uh, act on ludhiana base so we have filed a case in the supreme court regarding why government is not paying the well they have they are they have huge money in esi uh, which is lying ideal unused money is there is and why they are not paying the salaries but uh, i don't know what will happen let's say let's see thank you sir thank you we are you. trying on our part sure sir sure uh, i have one question for uh, mr anil kumar so as you know printing presses are like the production centers who provide customized services and morale becomes a very important factor uh, earlier as well and now it is going to be even more important how do you think employee morale can be at its best in this environment okay uh, it is extremely difficult but at the same time uh, it is very important also so when i look at uh, uh, the industry right now we were uh, talking about the vuca world for some time so volatility uncertainty complexity and ambiguity that was coming up but now the things have accelerated now nothing is clear nobody is knowing about uh, the future no clear agenda is there uh, for uh, even tomorrow because i know in my company we were discussing about the business plan in the month of march it has changed three times now fourth is also uh, we are not so clear about what is going to be the business plan for this year so things are changing in this changing scenario keeping the people at their best morale is very difficult when we are saying about the communication alignment and all people know what is happening in an organization but at the same time in future when we uh, see that you know the vuca world is going to come and uh, the gig workers 
the gig economy is going to come it is all uh, it is only the matter of time of course covid has accelerated the process now when the gig workers are going to come yeah, i know that from my small experience in the printing industry there are two types of employees there one is doing some transactional jobs i think uh, the 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 technology invasion is going to happen will take away all those jobs the transactional jobs that will not be there that will vanish but at the same time there will be always scope for the second category of employees you have they are the creative employees those people are going to be you no know, of high value if you are having some creative employees then of course you are the richest organization but unfortunately these type of people are not interested the new generation of course the mindset is changing the customized service uh, 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 of course is going to increase uh, further because uh, the covid has uh, brought some interesting behavioral changes in the human they are becoming more self centered individualistic and uh, technology addicts so this behavioral the human behavioral definitely uh, you know uh, finally reach the uh customer behavior and the business uh, organization behavior so these people who are very uh, talented creative they will like to be in move they will not be interested always in being in an organization so the employee the, the concept of employee itself is going to change it may not be your employee the gig gig worker he will dictate terms whether he is interested to work in your organization or not you may be having your own requirements you can take it up to the person the the the, the, the employee but he will come to your organization if he is interested so you the ultimate responsibility of uh, the organization is to provide an atmosphere an environment an infrastructure which is conducive for his own interest so the creative people will decide whether our organization is good for him so the morale in that way actually you provide motivation for those employees no they don't like uh, you no know, strict rules to be followed they want a uh, freedom they want a uh, space for them to work they don't want supervision and control at all so these are going to be a new normal of course because the transactional jobs are what we are seeing right now the the employees the at large is in that sector but that's going to change and if you are uh, uh, finally the the creative guys definitely the most valuable employees we need to you know uh, you know keep up their morale and another important thing for improving their morale is actually the technology the changes what is happening you should offer opportunities for their learning and development learning and development is the thing which is going to drive the whole world tomorrow because the 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 fast pace of changing is demanding that sort of a huge opportunity for uh, learning and development right now there is uh, people are doing a good job actually in this covid times they are in uh, in our case i am telling you my organization there are so many engineers who have got certification on management and the, the future technologies and people are working there are so many people who are doing some uh, uh, um, uh, courses right now they have started it so these are all the opportunities for learning and development and future also when the organization when the covid post covid period a lot of opportunities new opportunities are going to come but there should be opportunities for the employees to learn and develop if that is given and a good job of course the most important thing about motivation is the job itself if there's the job is giving enough uh, enriching experience for them they are going to be there they are going to be motivated so give them good job give them good uh, freedom and uh, you know uh, space to op operate give them empowerment empower those guys the so first of all train them and make them competent and empower them let them do the job they don't like supervision and control if that sort of a new atmosphere that's what i was telling about the reimagination of an organization when you reimagine an organization it is not the infrastructure that's going to change it is going to change the people the people are going to change then of course that new organization will have a more highly motivated uh, people when you give that opportunity this freedom 
uh, whatever I am say, saying about the, the, the interest of the new generation, next generation, if you provide that, of course, you will get the best out of it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Anil. So I'm going to do the exact uh, opposite. I'll go to uh, Mr. Venugopal Minan now and ask him, from people, what do we do to automate? I know there's a lot of tech available uh, in the market for uh, uh, the printing industry. So what do you, what do you what is your take on what kind of uh, uh, you know technology should they invest in in terms of automation and how important is automation going forward? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Sri Ram. So as uh, my previous uh, speakers Venkat and uh, Kamal Chopraji also mentioned that you no. Know, Today, tomorrow, maybe the uh, small company will survive and the large company could uh, survive. Uh, people who are more competitive in the field will survive. May, uh, as Venkat said that uh, many organizations will have to change the way they work, how will they will automate, how will they will organize themselves, how they can be more efficient so that they can survive uh, this, uh, uh, the changing times. So automation, I would say, as everyone would agree, as Five main benefits. Automation helps you to easy operation. It offers convenience. It helps you to faster and increase your throughput. It helps you to reduce cost per unit. That's very important. It helps you reduce your variable cost. It increases the reliability and the dependability. Offers consistency and can offer you reliable data. This are many advantages. And I would say that automation is not much of a choice today. It is a need of the hour. And businesses will have to adopt and embrace automation if at, if they have to grow profitably and be more efficient. There's no no no. What thoughts. kind of automation are we talking about here, sir? So, so for example, I would say simplest thing. For example, today if someone has to go back to his business today, everything opens up. How many print packaging companies can at one click of a button know how much they made money end of March? What is the inventory level lying at, at your plant? What are the receivables? What is the how all this data they can make a quick decision to provide they can open up. It's very, very difficult because many of the companies are working on owner driven. So owner knows it. They may have one accountant in the company and he has to go through many of the computer data and extract this. So one of the automation I feel going forward is that you all companies need a robust MIS system. So you need to adopt a kind of ERP which suits your business or adaptable to your business because ERP going forward MIS going forward is very important because it helps to standardize your business. It helps to know where your business stands at any given point of time. It helps you to know, make reliable uh, forecasting. It can help you for quick decision making. It can help you to know your inventory levels, your receivables, your wastage. Are you making processes in which you're losing money or you're making money? Even it goes to the extent that it can tell you which business segment is profitable, which client business is profitable and which is not. But this is one automation on the process side. I think many organizations will have to look at on the MIS and the ERP. Second, I would say that you need to look to automate the process and reduce dependability on people because this is very important because I feel wherever you can reduce manual intervention, wherever you can improve quality, automation should be brought in because technology is supportable automation you have to see whether it's affordable or not you need to know whether it can give you a decent return of investment because automation everywhere somewhere places very easy to adopt some it is more expensive so you need to know whether it can bring in efficiency and can give give you a recent uh, decent roi having said that any company adopting automation has to look it from the mid to long term don't think automation is for today short term for short term game never because there is an investment to it you have to make the cost benefit analysis. Look at the mid to long term, what it brings to you. For example, we are talking about digitalization. Now this will be very, going forward, digitalization will be the key. The way you communicate, the way you print, the way you convert, the way you communicate, everything. For example, machine connectivity. We are talking of industry 4.0 machine connectivity, which is bringing in IoT or artificial intelligence or machine learning, machine data. This is the way forward. And I'm sure this was going to be shown in Drupa. Unfortunately, Drupa did not happen. It will happen next year. You would have seen how important today that you are connected with your production process and your machine connectivity. Having said that, you as a businessman, as an owner, 
sitting every anywhere. So for example, your business is in Bombay and you are in Delhi, you are traveling to Europe or you are traveling having a holiday. At any given point of time, can you know what is your plant status? What is your machine status? What are the maintenance interventions coming up? What are the machine downtimes? Do you know the overall equipment efficiency, what your equipment is producing? This is very important to make an informed judgment and to make an action plan. So machine connectivity is going to be the in thing going forward and this is nothing else but automation. To cite an example, I will tell you, we recently sold a machine which can do, uh, you can print, cut, fold and glue, bundle, strap, everything in line. Now this customer had made an automation to feed the material into the machine. He brought an automation there. End of the line, normally you would require four to five people to take this bundle and palletize it. And this customer has gone for robotics. He has installed a robot to pick up this bundle and put it on the pallet. This is automation. So what he has brought in by this automation is he has reduced not only the four to five manpower and uh, because they don't add any value because, and that's one thing. And uh, if something, if two of the people don't turn up, his whole production line is stopped. So he's removing the dependability factor, he's removed the fatigue factor and brought in this automation. Just to give an example, robotics, uh, robot there. So it made sense, this kind of investment, and I think uh, it is uh, paying him off. So this was one example I, I wanted to cite. Uh, thank you, thank you, sir. Best. I think uh, you. You, you made a few relevant points in terms of uh, what uh, technology that everyone, even the medium-sized printers, sh uh, uh, should be looking at uh, to ensure that they, they stay uh, relevant at this point. Uh, uh, there is a question from uh, Mr. Uh, G. Venugopal on behalf of KMPA. Um, he has a question to Mrs. Ali Nair. Mrs. Ali Nair, are you here? Hello? Yes, yes, Mr. Venugopal, please go ahead. Well, I'm not able to hear you. He seems to be on mute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one second. Venugopal, Venugopal is not on mute. He has to... Sir, can, uh, Mr. Venugopal, can you unmute yourself, please? We'll come back. We'll come back. Uh, okay. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to Mr. Venugopal uh, yeah. for, for his question. So, in the meanwhile, there's a question from uh, Mr. Madhusudran of Akshara Offset uh, to Mr. Uh, K.S. Murthy. Uh, the question to you is, sir, it, it is a general feeling that there will be a shift in dependence on China. How well can Indian printers take advantage of the situation? Without any clear-cut planning and support from government, it will remain only a wishful thinking. How to prepare a roadmap for this and who shall take the lead in this chain? This is a question for Mr. K.S. Murthy from Madhusudran of Akshara Offset, Trivandrum. Uh -huh. Can you please repeat the question, please? Sure, sure. He, his question is general. That, uh, generally, that he believes that there is there could be a shift uh, in the dependence on China to India, and uh, a lot of business could come into India. And what he th what he he wants to know is what could be the roadmap for this, and who should take the lead in this change. See, definitely, it is they they themselves the printers as themselves have to take the lead, okay. right? Today, there is a lot of shift is going on between uh, from China to India. And this we have already seen many of the multinationals. Like, like, uh, I, because of certain confidentiality, we would be not able to release the need. Uh, many of the multinationals have started shifting their operations and the printing, sourcing of their packaging products from India now. And we have been working with them in the last one month, right from the beginning of the COVID in China. So it is the printers who also have to fully equip themselves and take the lead in taking the road forward. It is they themselves have to take the lead. Okay. I think uh, you made your point. Uh, there's, an, there's a question for uh, Mr. Venkat Raman now. This is from Pradeep Agarwal of LNE India. And he wants to know how the raw material prices, especially paper and boards, 
will behave in post covid times <laughs> what you perceive the prices to fluctuate i think we had this discussion yeah i think there would be curiosity so i think in the short term again i would go by my three phases uh, hypothesis there is one quarter which is going to be very disturbed all of us in business know that our inputs i mean if the paper manufacturer's inputs are reaching him you got to pay a higher price logistics are disrupted you may have to pay a higher price so one quarter which is the april to june quarter i expect to be disruptive and you may end up paying a bit of a premium or up charges after that i think the question of how well normal demand returns and how well industry which is us and you as printers and your uh, you know print customers adjust to the entire value chain so there already i think uh, you know in the seminar we have got many insights into what may do better what may not do better and stuff like that uh, so overall you would expect that commodity costs commodity prices are also a bit about oil and diesel and the negative prices and all those kind of things so there is a very disruptive quarter then there is a bit of adjustment and after that i think it will depend on pure market economics so if demand for many sectors is not so, so robust or strong then you might uh, expect to see some correction uh, sometime uh, towards the quarter 3 or quarter 4 of the current year but right now i think most things are so disrupted that you'll end up paying a little bit of premium for whatever you want got it got it so uh uh mr venugopal yeah, yeah 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 so uh it's a couple of questions i'll just the first question is going to sunny sir um uh, the first of all this three months moratorium is uh, completely not enough because we are talking another 35 days and the moratorium period is over so where do we find ourselves a chance where the moratorium period will be extended second is the cost of this moratorium this interest charge will have its own effect on us please elaborate on that and uh, whether during this time will there be any effect on the civil rating that is the question to salina sir uh, with regard to anil kumar there is only one question because we being in kerala the labor office is very strong here but uh, in the msme segment or the small scale segment the uh, laborers are ready to uh, forego their salaries so is there any particular format in which we can take this uh, you know there is some kind of a signatures that i can take and a form that can be filled to the labor office so that uh, we are on the legal side on the right side and last but not least a question to venkat raman and uh, venu gopal uh, is that uh, please let me know in the future what would be the pointers when we realize that we are ready for our next investment so first question would be to sali sir see uh, we work in a regulatory environment which essentially means we cannot uh, take a decision in isolation the regulator today has said three months of moratorium and that is what it is going to be but considering the uh, the consequences and the longevity of the uh, impact we have written to uh, the regulator asking rbi to give moratorium up to the first of december i don't know how they are going to react to it we have also written to the government sir uh, you are not you are not very government. audible sir yeah can you hear me Yeah, I think your hands blocking the mic. So. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, what I was saying was that yeah. uh, the moratorium as it stands today is just three months. Okay. However, we have written to the regulator to the Reserve Bank of India to increase the mor- moratorium uh, initially six months and perhaps, if possible, up to thirty first of December. We have also written to uh, to, the, to the government of India on this regard. As you are aware, the IBC ordinance yesterday has come. giving a moratorium for section 7 9 and 10 which is you know filing of bankruptcy already for 6 months so in line with that hopefully the reserve bank also may react and align its uh, its, uh, its moratorium package uh, uh, on that and the second question i if i i didn't quite catch the second question the second the, 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 the cost of the moratorium the cost of the moratorium the cost of the moratorium as it stands like i said initially the 3 months Uh, if it is a term loan, will be attached to the tail end of it, which means after, at the end of the three years or four years or five, five years, whatever be the term loan. After that, it will be it will be paid off. And in the case of the cash credit and the overdraft, unfortunately, as things stands, it has to be paid off on the first of uh, uh, June. And I am hoping some relaxation will come on that also. The third point on the civil, the irregularities, the issues that during the moratorium. that comes up will not i repeat will not impact your score or you know your rating at all in fact sebi has already come up with a guideline on this 
addressed to the credit rating agencies, which very clearly says the credit rating agency should not uh, should ignore the defaults during this moratorium period. So it will not have any impact on your credit rating. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Uh, sir, the question was to Anil, sir, with regard to the labor of this permission that needs to be granted if we are not able to pay the salaries. Okay, uh, this is a very valid question because uh, so many uh, people are actually discussing about uh, the salary cut. Uh, actually, I will tell you that uh, there are difference of opinion uh, even in the legal opinions given by senior advocates. And there are uh, cases in the Supreme Court also regarding uh, whether it is a legal uh, uh, thing to cut the salary fully or partially or whatever it is. Uh, so those things are there, but at the same time, you ask for uh, a, an agreement with the employees. Uh, I don't know whether you have got a union. Uh, if there is a union, you can there have is, an. There is no my MSME segment in Kerala. Hardly any presses in, in Kerala has a union. Oh, you are uh, really fortunate. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, so uh, then uh, you can have a, an agreement with the employees. Make it try to make it tripartite. That is not only an agreement with you. You can get it uh, uh, signed in the presence of uh, uh, the labor officer, saying that uh, the people are interested in a salary cut, uh, a surrender. Not you, you can mention it like that. It's a salary cut, and of course it can be hundred percentage. It's better to give something and uh, uh, forego the uh, seventy-five percent or something. Of course you can cut, and of course it, if that is a tripartite settlement, that has got a legal validity. Thank you, sir. thank you, thank you. And of course, I the last question. Ask Mr. Venugopal Menon to take that question. Yeah, the third yes. part of the question. Yeah, third part was, sir, what are the pointers which will allow us to understand whether it's the right time to invest or further with the present scenario? Yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's a difficult uh, question uh, because uh, I would say that uh, there are two ways to look at it. Uh, companies which were had already planned their capex uh, pre COVID and wherein they were looking at an investment which was required without which they could not have uh, serviced their clients and there was already a handicap uh, because of that investment i think customers will go uh, through with those kind of investments otherwise i would say people will have a watch to this quarter which is april may june and i think uh, they will say how the situation turns out how the demand uh, how the demand from your customers uh, how how it will flow uh, based on that, I think most of the customers will take their investment decisions uh, post uh, the first quarter, uh, post the Q1. Uh, so they will start uh, looking at capex from Q2, Q3, depending on the, how the how how the demand uh, forecast is from their buyers. Uh, so this is how I would like to explain in two folds. Thank you. One thing I'll just add uh, to yeah, Venu. Yeah, I'll just add to I'll just add to Venu. Yeah. Uh, probably uh, it'll depend on three things. If you had wanted investments to improve efficiency, productivity, or cost, I think you will probably consider that with a bit of deferment, depending on your cash flows or your comfort levels or how your bank is funding that. Second, if your customer base is going to change and, you know, post-COVID or something like that, even then decide to do something, I think that would be another uh, important uh, impetus for why you would do. Otherwise, I think some of this expenditure, like Venu said, you would probably defer for some period in time till you are more comfortable that you are running to actually some capacity and your cash flows are comfortable. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. One, Thank you. We have one final question from uh, uh, Uday Dote uh, from Dote Technocraft. So, yes, sir, please go ahead. Hello. Hello. Yes, you are you're audible. Please go ahead. You have a question for? Uh, uh, no, I, actually, I wanted to talk on. Uh, the MSME and commercial centers. Please go ahead, sir. Go quickly, sir, please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we all talked about big and small printers and the packaging and commercial printers. Yeah. And uh, most of the printers in India, around 70 to 80 uh, percent of the printers are MSMEs. See, but at least this nature has brought everybody at one level. And uh, now everybody is uh, ready to press the reset button. What the MSME printers should learn from this is try to become more smarter, uh, that is lean and mean, 
commercial printing, we said that it is it will fall and this thing. I think it will evolve. Uh, right now, even our literacy rate, which is at 74%, is uh, projected to be uh, going to 90% in 2020. So uh, that is one thing. And our domestic consumption is around 59.1%. So these two are factors, and there will be other industries uh, which will be coming up uh, post COVID, and we will find some commercial uh, this thing in that. But uh, there are only two types of commercial printers uh, which would uh, stay or we should find business uh, post COVID is one is uh, those who can be cost effective and uh, those who can be really quality conscious uh, and giving some premium products. Uh, what they have to do in the meantime when they have time in the lockdown period is uh, dig out the data, dig out data and see what mistakes they have done or what good projects they have done or whether they are going to need all these men who are employed whether they are going to need these activities or departments or machines which are there or not and try to uh, reshape the organization or maybe scale it down and another point which was uh, uh, brought out by mr menon uh, he talked about the dna of commercial printers and packaging printers yes at this juncture it is uh, definitely uh, uh, not advisable to go into some capex in fact it is a time uh, where those machines which you don't need, you should bring that kind of liquidity into the system. Uh, that day in uh, your conference, one of your conferences only, I heard uh, Mr. C. N. Ashok talk about three three uh, phases. Uh, one is where today liquidity is uh, required the highest, LPG he said. The second, after you maintain that liquidity for say of around 90 to 120 days, then would come the profitability and then you would plan the growth. So it would be in these phases. Right now, the liquidity is very important for the uh, uh, smaller uh, smaller units, and uh, they have to take out. Uh, they have to see that within these 90 days to 120 days, they are really cash positive. They cannot go cash negative in this uh, phase. They have to take out each and every item of uh, uh, their profit and loss account and see how they can uh, bring these costs under control. Uh, sir, I'm sorry, I have to cut you off there because no, uh, we no problem, your no time. Problem. Thank no. you, thank you for your uh, input. I think one final question that I have is for uh, Mr. Sali Nair. Uh, in terms of the association, uh, how do you think they can, uh, what do you think the association should do to be recognized by banks as a priority sector or a preferred sector? And uh, as printing and packaging can be an essential ca category. Uh, in the See, sense yeah. that there is capital investment and working, and it is a working capital intensive industry. So, what can it do to be recognized as a more uh, priority sector or a preferred sector? See, yeah. the definition of priority sector is something that the commercial banks have no control over. This okay. comes from the department, uh, from from the government of India and from the regulator. So, as, as an organization, as an association, the printing community must represent to the government. And the regular reserve of India, so that sector benefits are uh, um, made available to them through the commercial banks. Activity part of it is there, uh, subject to certain limits in investment. I think, in a, from a larger perspective, I think the community must represent to both the government and the reserve bank. Uh, we are losing your signal, sir. We can't hear you. Uh, we la last, uh, lost the last few oh. lines, I guess. Can you just repeat that one more time? Can, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Now we have, it is better, sir. So what I, uh, short uh, summary of what I was saying is that the commercial banks perhaps has no role here. The community must make itself visible and represent to the government of India. Government of India. And okay. the regulator, the Reserve Bank of India. So that they get accommodated in the priority sector. Uh, partly it is already there, you know, in, in terms of investment in plant uh, dictionary. And now I am told that uh, the rules are also getting uh, changed partly in terms of turnover. It has is, it is still not caused the rajas, but that's also happening. But you have to make yourself visible. And, uh, you know, the requirements has to be put across forcefully in the government, government of India. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for your input, sir. I think we have come to the end of the session. Uh, we've been uh, blessed to hear all these panelists share their thoughts. My sincere thanks to all our panelists for their time and sharing uh, all the valuable thoughts. There were several key takeaways which hopefully helps businesses 
and the industry to devise long term strategies for a, a better future the one resounding takeaway is that the industry culture needs to uh, change or move towards a more process oriented approach in fact uh, in his editorial uh, for print week ramu in emphasize on the same he said and i quote uh, our industry needs an overall the biggest hurdle is the indian print culture this is a good time as i need to take a good hard look at the process the people and finally there is the ownership model which prevents professionalism i think that summarizes where uh, we need to move in terms of uh, as the industry let me now request uh, pradeep kolakada of uh, future schools to share his closing thought i would also like to thank pradeep and the team for putting together this series of uh, webinar and over to you pradeep Uh, thank you, Sridham. Thank you very much. Uh, I am happy that uh, we had a good session today, and thank you everyone on the panel and Sridham. Mr. Schools is highly uh, motivated from the law session, and we received a lot of support from different parts of India, particularly the leaders of Indian industry and many companies. Actually, good support also. We are so committed to serve and collaborate with all of them in future. We are planning to conduct more knowledgeable seminars and also something similar to that, and expect more of your support and participation. For concluding, I want to express my sincere thanks to few who helped us to conduct the seminar as a big success. Dr. Rajendra Marale and uh, the Dr. Gisha Ovenu Master and the KMB team. So your uh, voice is not very clear, sir. Hello, hello. Ah, now better. Now it is. Now it is. Before concluding, I want to express my sincere thanks to few who helped us to conduct this seminar today. Dr. Rajendra Marale, Dr. Gisha, Dr. Gisha, Dr. Gisha, Dr. Gisha, Dr. Gisha. Team B A full team, the coordinator of Venu Babu sir, and also Kerala Academy for Skill and Excellence Managing Director and the team. They are they are so great partner for us. I also like to mention two technical partners with us, two three technical part partners with us who are supporting us for the uh, all the technical aspects of the seminar. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today, and uh, have a good evening.